Today uh, we presented a study on a rare um, syndrome, I guess you could call it, of patients who have a, um, uh, cancer uh, that's called germ cell tumor. It's not a blood cancer. Um, and there's a subset of those patients that get leukemia or other myeloid hematologic malignancies. And so we were really presenting on um, in those rare individuals where you have these two cancers, um, is there any relationship between the two? Uh, and we showed that uh, there is, and in fact, it's not the usual um, secondary cancers that happen because of chemotherapy or radiation. It's more um, that the germ cell tumor can actually become uh, leukemia. The reason that we want to study this and it's important is that it's um, unfortunately universally fatal, the occurrence of um, hematologic malignancy in a patient with germ cell tumor. There haven't been any uh, reported sort of long-term survivors and in our case the average survival was just five months. So um, the more we can understand about the biology of these um, tumors, maybe we can learn about new treatments. Germ cell tumors themselves are rare, but in the 20 to 30 year old male population, it's the most common type of cancer. Um, and so can, we're trying to find a way if we can predict which of those patients might be at risk for um, developing leukemia. And we have a couple markers, some that have already no been known about, like the um, presentation uh, in, a, in a mediastinum location or in the chest. Um, some uh, of the clonal, mar the cytogenetic markers that I mentioned, and then now we've added some uh, genetic markers as well that might be able to predict, although with this small study we weren't able to, to look at that. Um, and also now knowing the mutations that these leukemias carry, they're different than um, leukemias that occur independent of germ cell tumors. And um, so there might be new targets for therapies there.